as opposed to a spectator of a horror film, you may find yourself in the middle of it, even after you leave the theater. And, you know, there's yeah, lots of talk in um, this notion of uh, locus of control. Right. And um, individuals who, who have uh, externalized their locus of control, they're often in a horror movie. There are right. all these ways in which we are, um, we, um, we are, that if when people enter therapy, what often happens is they begin to uh, modulate the things they feel. They begin to uh, experience a, an extended uh, locus of control. That euthymic window broadens. These are all things that can happen that you right. can work towards. Right. But but yeah, and I was thinking, you know, we mentioned the family members and somebody who would, would never see these horror movies. Uh, they're restricting themselves in a certain way mm -hmm. uh, because of that. But also, it, it, on a conscious level, it's like, um, I don't want to be exposed to that. It's too real. Mm -hmm. In other words, they sort of label it as mm -hmm. this movie. And I've said that to uh, my wife on a number of occasions. These actors are getting paid a lot of money to have mm -hmm. their hands cut off or mm -hmm. whatever that might be. Well, what do uh, you think about this effects, It's not real. And I'm not sure that everybody, I think people are kind of like at the surface level of thinking that it, it hits them in that way. Even so, though they well, know why different. do you think that would be then? So because, for instance, in your case, you can navigate these sort of um, stage traumas in a horror film by saying, well, this is good special effects. You can, you can mm -hmm. allow yourself a, a capacity to be both participant and observer in, in the film, and you can generate enough observer self-reflective status to be able to say, okay, right now, let me remind myself, this is just, you know, and the special effects are great. Some people can't. Getting better. What now? They're getting better. They're getting better, better I yeah. mean, it looks like, yeah, right. it would convince some people that it's real, Come out of context, a long way you know, since Plan bit, 9 yeah. from outer space. <laughs> but, uh, so, um, but others don't seem to have that capacity. Well, what do you think right. about that? Why, why, why would... Uh, I, I I don't know. I, I'm I'm almost thinking that it's some defense mechanism where um, we are resistant to exposing ourselves to it. Mm -hmm. that, that at some level we're telling ourselves we can't quite manage that or we don't want to manage it. Uh, and therefore it's a protective mechanism mm -hmm. that we kind of keep ourselves away from that because of what, uh, what it might turn up in us mm -hmm. and maybe a little afraid of, of, of that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I think you're right about the exposure of it. The mm -hmm. more you're kind of exposed and you see it, the, the greater uh, capacity you have to manage it. Well, I wonder what that capacity, and, and there, there are probably some research on this in terms of um, – is there a certain character structure that respond to um, horror movies a certain way? Uh, maybe even right. attachment styles. Right. Are there? Right. Um, is there something about um, the ways in which we organize our, our inner selves or the maps we have for the world right. that may that may uh, that um, may tell us something about how we're able to watch or not watch a horror movie? Right, right. Like I wonder. I mean, on, on a, just on a simple level, it's it's um, you know this is going to connect with some trauma that the person has, and they mm -hmm. are trying it by all means to avoid going back mm -hmm. and looking at that. When we know in therapy, that's exactly where we need to go mm -hmm. to sort of work through that mm -hmm. issue, whatever that trauma might be, and come it, out on the other that side. That idea of, yeah. of of the edge, uh, that growth edge. Yes. To be able to come to a place where someone is is just at a spot where they're experiencing just enough anxiety to help them to be able to regulate that, to modulate it, or to, to modulate it, hopefully, and to be able to get them through modulation to be able to move a little further through it. Right, right. Um, you know, I don't think too many people, I've had people come into therapy and say, you know, they're, they're afraid of flying or right. they have some specific phobias. I haven't had anyone come in and say they have a fear of, they want to be able to overcome their horror movie fear, but, um, you know, I, uh, well, it, you know, it might be diagnostic to just ask them about uh, horror movies. How, how many horror movies have you seen? I never go to horror movies or whatever. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, might, they might that would respond be part to that. Of a, it, might, yeah. it might be kind of fun as a research project, perhaps. But, but what about, the, you could have the opposite problem. Like, um, what about someone who is, um, who is drawn to horror movies, you know, like um, um, individuals who, who, who are within the psychopathic realm, they often have to um, chase uh, louder and more intense experiences because that's what they need to feel some sense of life. Right. Um, they're right. individuals whose relationship to the abject 
may be such that as opposed to some sort of healthy disownership, they are somehow immersed in it. That um, the serial killer that may um, want to um, find themselves awash in their victim's viscera, right? Yeah. This is the opposite of the sort of disowning and dance with the abject that we might expect in a, quote, healthy person. Right. So we could say that, you know, maybe uh, maybe there's a connection between too much consumption or that uh, of a horror mo- of horror movies that may say something, too. Right, you know? right. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. It <clears throat> may be almost like a tolerance level that you have to get another fix from mm-hmm. the substance abuse literature that the tolerance level is sort mm-hmm. of continues to bump up and you have to have more and more mm-hmm. uh, to satiate that, that kind of thing. Well, that's interesting. So I, 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 my, my question back to you about this, and I appreciate all the, uh, that was very insightful uh, discussion, but, but uh, you, um, I, I'm guessing that you have a hard time enjoying this horror movie that you're going to see uh, because you're, well, uh, you're running it through that psychoanalytic filter and you're watching out for these kind of things that we just <laughs> talked about. And I'm a little concerned that, wait, what about the entertainment value for you? Can you just say, wow. That well, was you, really because good. This is why I think that there is the, you want to be able to balance the, um, Participer, participant observer element. So, um, and what that means is you are both present, but also have the capacity for self-reflection and experiences. And your capacity for flexibility with that is important. If, if, um, like we mentioned the Tarantino last week, sure. it's usually only afterwards that I begin to think about it. If right. it's a really good film, it creates a holding space yes, where I it become draws you in. right. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. one of the benefits of that film, we talked about it last time, is you felt sort of sad because you were leaving. Like right. it created enough of an atmosphere, like you were there, and it was a place you wanted to be. And you know, so in a way, if the movie's effective, uh, and that's that's that old aesthetic notion of form versus content. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The if somebody creates the right sort of form, then I think your your ego can be suspended and you can have a regression. You can find yourself. A, a, it's sometimes talked about in the psychological literature as a temporary form of psychosis that you allow your right. boundaries to be diffuse and move into it. So, yeah. part of the reason why I was excited about the movie and the movie I'm going to see is Midsummer, right? Midsummer, something like that. Yes. Okay. There you go. Part of what what drew me to it is is it it's this is a director who's known for being quite good. Okay. This is, I think, his second film. I think Heredity is his first, which I didn't see. I um, really like to. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut in, but I just I, the, the idea of being a good director and what does that mean? Mm-hmm. I'd love to explore that yeah, some more. Yeah. We get to talk about that maybe at another point. But mm-hmm. uh, what what goes into making that? Is yeah. it the editing? Is it the way I, the shot was was done? Yeah. I, I think. And think uh, about how some of that might be taught, sort of a little like becoming a good therapist. But other has other, but a chunk of it also has to be earned, maybe you're even born with. Because, you know, if this guy, and I may be, this guy may be a lousy director, it's going to be an eight-hour movie, so it better be good. But, <laughs> no, but, but I think it is about three hours, so get yeah, ready is, for is. that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And, and my, my wife, who is a rule, tends to avoid horror movies just like yours. Right. She decided she wanted to see this, so we're gonna, I may only get to see 30 minutes of it. Okay, but, she <laughs> bolt out. Uh, I may, yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna to be checking on her. So, uh, but <laughs> if, if they can... Part of what drew me to this is this is an individual who has a reputation for creating that space, and probably what needs to happen in a good horror movie, maybe we could talk about this uh, at another time too, is mm-hmm. is that if you think about like the movie Aliens, for instance, it wasn't right. just constant things busting out of someone's chest. Oh, no, no. They created an atmosphere. It was the lead up to it. Right. And, and uh, that, you know, down that hallway, yeah. and the sounds and what's going to happen next. It's like almost uh, a scene in all of those, uh, some of the horror movies, quite a few, is that long shot down the hallway mm-hmm. where there's a door at the end. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're getting closer and closer mm-hmm. to finding out what's behind that door. And there's, so. you see, there's, there's music, there's sound. Yes. You really create a space that you are, you, that you can exist in. So I think that in some ways, it's certainly up to me to be able to approach it with the possibility of that ego diffusion. But right. I'm also going to require a really good horror film, you know, creates a, a space. And, you know, e- even a really a cheesy horror film creates a space because it sure. gives you that feeling of, you know, staying up late at night watching horror movies when you were a kid or... 
it, it offers yeah. a different sort of regression. And maybe right, right. another thing to talk about sometimes is the different forms of horror, because you know there's 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 body horror films. There's they're all different kinds, and they all scratch different itch itches. And um, this, I think, and again, I, I've avoided too much information on it because I wanted to be able to approach it with a sure. But I think it is sort of a slow burner, and it's um, you know, it's um, right. it's supposed to create sort of this paranoid you. atmosphere. And, right. Uh, if you think about like Rosemary's Baby or um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, you know, the different horror films that right. that part of the form that you uh, you are uh, walking around in is one of. Paranoia, one of them. Right. Mm-hmm. A little bit, little edge of fear there that you're moving to something and not really sure. 